Okay, I'm going to begin my presentation with um, a little bit of history about the Canadian Aboriginal AIDS Network, um, which I, uh, I have been involved with the work uh, at the Canadian Aboriginal AIDS Network now for a number of years. But most recently, the last two and a half years as a staff member, um, working in the capacity of the Community Readiness Project Supervisor with CAN, um, and it, it's the Community Readiness Project that, that I have the great opportunity of working with some wonderful people across the country in, in what I will talk about, the Community Readiness Model. So the Canadian Aboriginal AIDS Network um, was incorporated back in 1997. And we have about approximately uh, almost 400 Ab Aboriginal HIV AIDS uh, organizations uh, from coast to coast to coast. <coughs> and CAN's, the CAN's mandate is still uh, HIV and AIDS. However, back in December of 2012, uh, CAN expanded uh, our mandate to holistically um, address HIV and AIDS, uh, the hepatitis C virus, uh, other bloodborne infections, aging related comorbidities, and, uh, and of course sexually transmitted infections. And like Adam, uh, CAN uh, promotes uh, a social determinants of health framework um, in the work that we do through, through advocacy. Um, and we, we provide accurate, sort of up-to-date information on, <laughs> on these issues in a, in, a, in a culturally relevant manner so that Aboriginal, uh, wherever Aboriginal peoples reside, Besides the Community Readiness Project that I spoke to, there are other projects um, online that you will find. Uh, some of them include uh, Leadership Youth and uh, the Leadership Women Projects, the International Indigenous Working Group on HIV and AIDS, and the Aboriginal HIV and AIDS Community-Based Research Collaborative Center that we have in Halifax. Um, Evan used graphs, <laughs> um, <coughs> Percy used findings, I'm going to use uh, at a glance. <laughs> <laughs> so in Canada, Aboriginal, as most of you probably know, in Canada Aboriginal people uh, remain disproportionately affected by HIV. Um, and it is estimated that in 2011, Aboriginal people made up 12.2 of new infections and 8.9% uh, of those living with HIV in Canada. Like uh, Evan had alluded to in BC, it's uh, also injection drug use remains the the main route of uh, HIV transmission among Aboriginal people. Uh, the, estimate, the estimated proportion of new HIV infections in 2011 uh, attributed to injection drug use exposure uh, was much higher among Aboriginal people, which is about 58.1% than among all Canadians, which was at 13.7%. HIV has a significant impact on Aboriginal females. Uh, between 1998 and 2012, nearly half, or 47.3% of all positive HIV test reports among Aboriginal people were females, compared with 20.1% uh, of reports for people with other, from other ethnicities. Almost uh, age at the time of uh, HIV diagnosis uh, for Aboriginal peoples tend to be younger uh, than for people of other ethnicities. So almost one-third, or 31.6% of the positive HIV test reports from 1998 to 2012 among Aboriginal people were youth aged 
uh, 15 to 29 years old, uh, compared with 22.2% uh, of those of other ethnicities. HIV risk among Aboriginal people is closely linked to a variety of determinants of health that influence uh, vulnerability to influence, including poverty, unstable housing and homelessness, mental health and addictions, traumatic childhood experiences, racism, and the multi-generational effects of colonialism and the residential school system. When people see images like this one, people think of this when we think of drug use. Yet maybe the reality for some, um, but drug use certainly has many faces. So CAN began to the, respond uh, to harm reduction by uh, creating culturally relevant materials uh, and resources like this document, uh, Walk With Me, uh, Pathways to Health, highlights uh, the need for Aboriginal communities to respond uh, to the HIV, uh, HIV and AIDS epidemic and, and in particular harm reduction. The harm reduction implementation guide uh, you see here uh, it, this, this document complements the uh, Walk With Me document by highlighting ways that can best introduce risk reduction uh, in a community. And this document also introduced the, the concept of the community readiness model. So these tools were developed to uh, support communities uh, in creating policy and practice that reflect Aboriginal ways of thinking and knowing and relating to one another and highlights the importance of honoring uh, the diversity between and among Aboriginal peoples and their socio-cultural context. So when we talk about harm reduction um, in the Aboriginal HIV AIDS movement, because we know that many of our people have become infected through injection drug use and unprotected sex. So we work with people to understand what might have made the difference um, for them when they were involved in harmful behaviors, uh, we asked them, what can we do now? Harm reduction approaches are often uh, named as, uh, as key to building the relationships uh, necessary to support uh, people to protect themselves from harm. And we will keep talking to them uh, about harm reduction as it is a key aspect of the uh, preventing uh, HIV and AIDS and everyone is at risk. The community readiness model um, was developed by the Triethnic Center for Prevention and Research at the Colorado State University. And it's, it's the validity and uh, reliability have been demonstrated in many, many communities uh, and with many issues. Um, this model, which is Aboriginal, uh, it's based on an Aboriginal model, um, and it can be applied to any community, and whether it be on-off reserve, issue-based organizational, prison populations, in treatment, in recovery, research, you can apply it practically to any issue. The model, uh, <clears throat> the when we talk about uh, community readiness, um, we talk about how ready um, a community is, is to address uh, a particular issue. And the community readiness models are, are noted for guiding communities in effectively addressing many issues like substance use, domestic violence, uh, cancer prevention initiatives, initiatives have, uh, just, just to name a few, um, have been used. So we can believe that community readiness is uh, necessary in order to create change, uh, particularly for community issues that create conflict and tension, um, like substance use or domestic violence. Fortunately, um, 
Community readiness models are proven to provide guidance in creating responses to complex issues that can be supported by the broader community. So that is uh, creating easy to swallow approaches that even opponents can support. There are a number of community readiness models uh, and you can find many, many examples of, of, of community readiness assessments, for example, online. The thing I like about this model that is, is that it in integrates culture, um, resources and level of readiness and, and brings together the community, it builds cooperation and it increases the capacity for prevention and intervention. The model recognizes um, the uniqueness of every community uh, and, and it also recognizes that communities are at different stages of uh, willingness and ability, for example. Um, readiness is the degree to which a community uh, is prepared to take uh, action on an issue and, and risk reduction to prevent HIV and, and hepatitis C infection. So CAN documented the lessons that we learned um, from pilot projects. And what we found was lacking uh, was the capacity to move forward from assessment to planning culturally appropriate intervention approaches and Im implementing plans in the communities. So in 2009 to 2011, CAN piloted uh, community readiness assessments with Aboriginal organizations and First Nations communities across the country. And the, assess, the Assessing Community Readiness and Implementing Risk Reduction Strategy Manual and, and Workbook was, uh, was created. This um, manual and workbook resources, uh, these two particular resources offer, uh, a, offers a tool to train community facilitators who can then conduct their own community readiness assessment, uh, develop a cultural culturally appropriate intervention and approaches and implement and evaluate the process and, and their impacts. So the community readiness model is a very innovative um, method for assessing the level of a readiness a community uh, is at to develop and Im implement uh, prevention programming. And it can be used as both a research tool uh, to assess distribution of levels of readiness across a group of communities, or it can be used as a tool to guide prevention efforts uh, to the individual community level. We uh, can offer regional uh, community readiness national trained trainer ses sessions, which provide frontline and community trainers uh, with the knowledge and skills to train community facilitators. Like I said, CAN uses the train-to-trainer approach by providing regional workshops. And after the training has taken place, usually a month later, um, participants provide feedback through uh, key respondent interviews with uh, community members on strategies and interventions uh, used in their home community to address risk reduction. So here are some examples of uh, what is assessed using the uh, community readiness model and the dimensions of uh, community readiness. Dimensions of readiness are, are really key factors uh, that, in, that influence a uh, community's preparedness to take action on an issue. And the six dimensions that you see here um, identified and measured in the community very, that are uh, measured in the community readiness model, they're, they're actually very comprehensive in nature. Um, they are an excellent uh, tool for diagnosing a community's needs and for developing strategies that meet those needs. And all these dimensions are used to obtain a final uh, community readiness score uh, with regards to HIV and AIDS prevention. However, the 
individual dimensions are more telling when making uh, the decision where and how to develop your strategies. For example, community efforts, for example. To what extent uh, are these efforts or programs and activities uh, useful? It talks about the community knowledge of the efforts, the leadership um, is a key component, the community climate. Uh, can be uh, very, uh, can include conflict uh, type divisions that can, the model can use to be used to uh, design interventions and strategies to deal with, with, with conflict. The model is very useful in uh, helping identify resources, uh, helping identify obstacles. It, provides uh, an assessment of how ready the community is with respect to accepting a given issue as something that needs doing, for example, uh, their truth. It identifies the types of efforts uh, that are appropriate to initiate uh, depending on the stage of readiness, and it helps build cooperations among uh, systems and individuals. This final slide uh, illustrates the process using the community readiness model. Step one, um, you first of all have to identify uh, your issue. In this case, the issue um, to create a, is, is to create a greater awareness of HIV and AIDS. Um, this, is, and this issue may not only provide us with valuable insight into community perspective on HIV and AIDS, but also gives us information on related issues like the prevention of STIs, access to prevention materials, testing sites, uh, etc. The step two is, is to define your community, and the concept of community may include uh, an organization within the community. Uh, or a subgroup like elders or youth or targeting a, a specific age group. Uh, step three is to define uh, the community's level of readiness, conduct a community readiness assessment using uh, key respondent interviews. Uh, step four, um, with the completed assessment, you are ready to score your community inter interviews for each of the six dimensions as well as uh, calculating an overall score. Step four is about developing strategies and conducting workshops. And depending on what the, kit, what the score is of uh, where the community is at in terms of the model, um, we work closely and we, we provide support to the community in developing action plans based on where they're at. For example, if a community uh, scores say one, if they're at stage one of, uh, of readiness, which is no awareness at all of HIV and AIDS, there are a number of uh, interventions and strategies that we would uh, introduce with them and help them prepare an action plan. And it could be as simple of could be as simple as doing uh, one on one uh, basic facts of HIV AIDS workshops. Um, and finally, community change. And we realize that, you know, um, CAN supports um, and realizes that because of the diversity of Aboriginal communities across the country, communities are at varying different, like I said before, varying stages of readiness. Uh, so communities, and, and we recognize that community change um, uh, even in terms of leadership as a strategy, for example, uh, the model can certainly help uh, in terms of, of, of moving the community along in terms of changing uh, issues like leadership and help with pre-planning, um, yeah. So all of the resources that I refer to in this uh, in, in my presentation are available and you can uh, visit uh, visit our website at www.can.ca. Uh, and that concludes my presentation. Nakamikin, thank you.